welcome to this episode of the EnviMet uh, World Series. The context is uh, Parma in Italy. Uh, but this mostly serves as a background to discuss uh, the topic of courtyard and how they are or they can potentially adapt uh, to future climatic patterns. Why courtyard? Because they are known as a bioclimatic uh, uh, form and also throughout history uh, they have been spreading in uh, Europe, mainly in the Mediterranean area but also in South America, in China, in India. And needless to say, also the Arabic created uh, several interesting interpretations of the courtyard. Perhaps uh, their most known case is the Alhambra in Granada, that features water in some courtyards, vegetation in some other, and some other are characterized by very sophisticated system of ventilation. So we select a case uh, which is um, stereotypical in the sense that it has a common characteristic that can be found across uh, southern Europe. And this is a cloister and is named uh, San Sepulchre. It features an arcade uh, on three sides uh, and a grass. The first approach we had to it uh, is to understand how it is performing. So we interview the occupants, those that use the space, and they are already alerted that climate change uh, is creating some differences. Uh, mostly they are manifesting a certain uh, comfort uh, stress, especially in using it, uh, so that the fruition of the space is actually reduced. So we try to back up it throughout studies with climatic morphing for 2080. And we saw how radiation changes, how temperature, especially at night, are under rays in the summer. And when we look at more integrated comfort index, such as the UTCI, we can see how, especially in summer, there is a big issue in terms of fruibility of the space itself. So we use Envimet to study what is happening within the courtyard and also what is happening within the context. It is very important uh, to understand at large uh, how different urban features, how different material, how different living system or water are acting in other parts of the city. And then we focus a bit more into the courtyard and uh, we could see uh, some issue especially uh, climate change uh, uh, will bring the uh, UTCI, which is the Universal Thermal Climate Index, uh, uh, which for those that don't use it, um, um, expresses uh, the real feel of uh, people within the space. So already today there is a need stress, but when we project in 2080, the situation is highly compromised. This may be due to lack of ventilation of this specific typology, uh, but also um, to a new magnitude of the radiation. The radiation especially is one of the things more affected directly by climate change in the parameter that by a cascade system influence others, uh, but especially at the upper part of courtyards, those that are not overshade, the relative increase of radiation and therefore all the thermodynamic loops, including the near wall temperature, are strongly on the rays. Let's have a look at how in tropical area, because we have to face the reality, this is becoming a tropical area, a hot tropical area, we look into nature, how nature and system overshade, how some other allow for ventilation, and how uh, some other sweat, so the overall idea was to propose three solutions. The first is a cascade of uh, uh, elements uh, from a virtual ceiling, uh, which was optimized according to a genetic optimization um, to, to face uh, the issue of the changed uh, magnitude of radiation. And um, the second option was to try to bring back the layer of ventilation that uh, was there at, in the Renaissance uh, time. So in a philological manner, uh, we reopened one of the sites that was later closed in order to increase uh, volumetric uses uh, of the spaces. And uh, therefore we open uh, an arcade in order to promote uh, ventilation. The last option was the one of adding water 
uh, a thin film of water, as well as abundant uh, uh, vegetation and therefore uh, trees. So the question is, uh, how are these solutions acting today and how they will be acting in 2018? The type of solution that uh, offer major performance is the one of controlling radiation by shading device. Especially the proposed solution offers some ventilation. Uh, so the system is not obstructing air flows. Uh, but also it could be seen that um, uh, increasing ventilation has some benefit, especially in those areas that are in shade. In areas that are exposed to radiation, uh, um, the effect of increasing ventilation isn't that high. And last, adding a layer of water and trees um, brings some benefit in terms of uh, UTCI, uh, but uh, uh, not so evident. Uh, and um, this had to be found, uh, for instance, in the fact that water by evaporating may increase the enthalpy of the area. Um, as well as the trees, it's true that they have a lower temperature and that is stable. Uh, but on the other end, they may block some air flows, especially at pedestrian level. So, what are the conclusions of this uh, uh, exercise? The first reflection is computational. Environment allows uh, to account for living system, shading system at a very good definition. And um, implication can be then studied today. This is um, a quite an, an important target because um, uh, it wasn't achievable uh, just a few years um, uh, ago. Second, um, that um, uh, more solution can act upon, um, let's say, adapting to climate change and each has a different degree of uh, um, thermal resilience. So it's necessary to study different cases uh, and those need to be hyper-specific. And then uh, future work is to support this type of work uh, uh, with uh, building uh, the case of shedding and taking some uh, measurements uh, uh, so that um, uh, the models can be further calibrated and uh, strategies explored. I hope uh, the case uh, was of your interest and please feel free to contact us uh, for any type of uh, questions.